Hello and welcome to Debate Help, the only debate YouTube channel hosted by a grizzly bear. As you see, I'm getting a little more shaggy as we go along throughout the season here. Uh, today, we are going to be doing the topic analysis for February for Lincoln Douglas. Um, and the resolution is resolved on balance. The benefits of urbanization in West Africa outweigh the harms. So always with topics, you need to look first to the wording of the resolution. We're looking at West Africa generally, not any specific countries here. Um, so immediately you need to know your geography. Look at a map, see what is considered West Africa. Because if you're going against someone and they start talking about Ethiopia, then you got to know, hey, that's East Africa. That's not resolutional. So make sure that you have a working definition of West Africa so you know that you can be debating on the same terms as your opponent. Always make sure you have those fundamentals solid. Next, it's the benefits outweigh the harms. So it's a balancing resolution. So immediately, um, any, any points your opponent brings up, you know, you don't have to like die if they bring up a good point. Yeah, sure, that's a benefit, but here are the harms. Or sure, that's a harm, but here are the benefits. It's a balancing. So it's important to always make sure that you're keeping that in mind on these topics. It's not a, hey, if I only, you know, some, some topics you can say, hey, if I only have to prove it in one instance, you can negate. That's not the case here. So that actually makes it a little bit more difficult and I actually prefer these debates because you can have a little bit more back and forth. Now, in terms of whether West Africa is urbanizing, I'll leave that to you. There is a ton of research. Uh, I mean, it's been urbanizing pretty rapidly for the better part of 50 years now. Uh, it was one of the least urbanized places in the world before. And um, so, you know, I'll put some, you know, I always put some sources in the description box below that you can do some research. But... Um, make sure that you're researching what exactly is urbanization. What happens to a country when it urbanizes? Does that mean it's industrializing? Because if it's industrializing, then you can bring in all sorts of things for that in terms of the economy. If it is not, in, if it's urbanizing without industrializing, then that could mean a whole slate of different things. Um, does it improving internet access? So you have to look at what exactly is involved with urbanizing. Um, so, you know, there's a couple of points. I'm not going to necessarily go over big contentions today. Um, you know, this is a little bit out of my typical area of expertise. It's it's one of those topics that's a little bit out of left field, but that's, you know, when, you know that's the mark of what makes a good debater, though, is whether you can look into something and make yourself, excuse me, make yourself familiar with it. So, um, one thing the first thing that I came across in my initial research, and all I do is initial research on this. I'm not going to sit down here for 40 hours a week and do research, especially because I don't have any public forum teams this year. Um, so, uh, you know, these are always general points. These are jumping off points, giving you something to look into. So uh, one thing that is happening in West Africa is that it's intensifying the economic advantages of cities. So... You know, it, it used to be way long ago, the more rural parts of countries were the more wealthy parts. Uh, think of the antebellum south, you know, how the south was much more wealthy than the north early on. But as countries industrialized and urbanized, um, those, those urban centers then became the centers of wealth. And by the Civil War, the north was way more wealthy than the south, and they could produce much more stuff. But um, whenever you have an economic advantage in cities, that creates a bulge of young people, and that can be good or bad. Uh, you could have an aging population in the future. Look at the United States now. We had a bulge of young people after World War II, and now we have to pay for their Social Security, and that puts a strain on the system. So whenever you have demographics that are out of balance, you have to think of those things. China's heading for a cliff with that because of their one-child policy. That population is going to age, and there's going to be no one to pay for it because older people have a lot of medical bills, um, and they're no, no longer working whenever they're older, so they can't provide the wealth to the country that they did when they're young. So a really young population has a lot of wealth because everyone's working, and they can produce a lot of stuff. 
but as that population ages, they become, or at least after they retire, they become less productive and then you have to take care of them. So you can look at whether there's short-term benefits or long-term drawbacks for that. Um, so basically, uh, you know, cities can take advantage of this. Uh, they can employ a lot of young people. Um, but uh, if those young people have a lot of aspirations and cities don't meet that, that can also be pretty disastrous. Um, so you should look into stuff like that. There are specific articles that talk about the what happens whenever you have a, a, a really young population. Um, second, you do want to look at industrialization. Does urbanization mean industrialization? That could drive wealth. Uh, many cities have pushed to industrialize similar to the Chinese model. So you want to look up the Chinese model, even though they're, you know, we're talking about West Africa generally. There is no overarching government here that would invest in industrialization like they did in China. Uh, so it's not going to be completely like the Chinese model, but specific cities have pushed to make it like the Chinese model. And that's part of the reason why it's in, it's it's urbanizing um and it, it's why it's it may not be a benefit is because you don't have that central uh command there that central planning you're just having cities trying to industrialize and urbanize and you're not doing anything for the people left in the country um so that can create its own host of problems but um familiarize yourself with the chinese model of urbanization because a good opponent will be familiar with that and they can hit you on stuff that you're unfamiliar with. So make sure you're looking into that. Um, poverty, that's going to be a big one here. So impoverished people tend to urbanize faster. So you wanna be thinking about poverty, but there's a counter to that and that is that urbanization can help eradicate poverty. So poor people move to the city and that concentrates poverty. Think of American inner cities. But um, having an urbanized population makes it easier to eradicate poverty if the cities choose to do that. Of course, in the United States, we don't give a crap about poor people. So we just kind of let them die, basically. Um, not to be too dramatic, but we kind of do. Um, but if you help uh, distribute wealth in an equitable way, you can actually help eradicate poverty um, and, you know, faster urbanization, it's been associated with rapid poverty reductions in the developing world. Um, but, uh, you know, and I, I'm going to be providing a source for that as well. So uh, make sure you're looking into that because you can actually get some statistics about how rapid urbanization is uh, coincides with, with uh, reductions in poverty. But a lot of that is because of planning. A lot of that is because of government policies. Whereas in the United States, I don't know if you necessarily have that poverty reduction because our poverty rates stayed pretty stable as we've been urbanizing. So that, that very much so depends on the government doing the urbanizing. Um, so there are two points that are a big nag. So you have poverty reduction, I think, for the benefits. Obviously, poverty reduction, industrialization, that's really going to help the economy going to pull a lot of people out of poverty. On the NAG, you, got, uh, you have biodiversity and global warming. So um, urbanization can threaten eco ecosystems and biodiversity. Um, you know, you're just taking away, you're literally just cutting down trees or grasslands, or you're taking away a lot of the ecosystems that wildlife lives in and you know you can you might want to do some research into how the world is hurting biodiversity um, and how that can sort of sort of threaten local ecosystems um, you know a lot of patches of desert are because of local ecosystems and stuff like that so you have to be careful uh, I know like the Sahara Desert has been growing but Africa as a whole is creating what they call a green wall where they're planting trees and grass uh, in order to halt the, the spread of the Sahara. So if you're taking away a lot of those things, you can have things like the Sahara Desert spreading. That might be something, you know, look, Google the green wall in Africa. Google that because that might, you might be able to bring that in on this topic. Uh, actually, I would advise you to bring that in on this topic because the Sahara Desert, of course, can reach into West Africa 
and uh, taking away biodiversity and eliminating a lot of those trees may make that worse. Um, and then finally, global warming. Urbanization hurts global warming. Not only, you know, you get more cars in cities, you have more industries in cities which pollute and emit carbon dioxide. But one thing that I think can be a really unique argument, and I always try to give you guys some really good unique arguments, um, is concrete. So why would concrete matter? Well, what are cities built out of? Most skyscrapers, you know, there there are some trends where skyscrapers are being built by wood. There's actually a uh, there's actually a video by Cheddar that focuses on that. You could look into, but uh, most skyscrapers in most cities are built with concrete. Concrete, it's the most widely used man-made material, and concrete is a major major contributor to carbon dioxide. It, it, it accounts for about 8% of carbon dioxide being emitted into the atmosphere. The aviation industry, you think of planes as being high polluting, that's only 2.5%. So concrete is almost triple, more than triple the amount of carbon dioxide emitted of the, of the entire aviation industry. To give you an idea of the scale of the impact of concrete on carbon dioxide and thus global warming. That, you, you know, it's almost impossible to urbanize without using large amounts of concrete. So you have to, you know, I would strongly advise doing some research on that and bringing it in because global warming is, you know, I think global warming is probably your best point on NAG here um, or your best point, it's your best uh, harm because uh, obviously, you know, global warming affects everyone. It's a worldwide instead of just local. And uh, so if you're rapidly urbanizing, you're bringing in more cars to the cities, you're bringing in more factories, you're emitting more CO2, you're bringing in more concrete, um, you know, you're gonna run into some problems with global warming. And finally, uh, urbanization can affect your water cycle. So think of where the Sahara Desert is. Um, now, you know, Africa has a lot more water than we think it does. Uh, a lot of people in the West just kind of assume all of Africa is the Sahara Desert and that people struggle with water. And there's actually a really funny video series going around on Instagram and TikTok of a guy in Africa making fun of Westerners sending water to them. But we're talking about West Africa here, and that touches into the Sahara Desert. So you might be able to bring the water cycle into this topic. Um, and that's also affected by concrete. So concrete is impervious and it creates runoff that hurts groundwater, that creates erosion, and it hurts water quality. Um, and so that's something to certainly look into. Uh, you, you know, erosion can be a big problem. You, you wanna look into the, you know, whenever I'm talking about these things, I say, okay, well, it affects erosion. That means you go Google what, or what the harms of our erosion. I'm not, you know, these videos are already 15, 20 minutes. If I went in and broke down, you know, the harms of erosion, like these would be hours long. And so I'm only giving you jumping off points in these videos. So look up, you know, what, what's so bad about erosion? How is water quality affected by concrete and by runoff? Um, I live close to the city of Youngstown. The city of Youngstown, the water runoff goes into the sewer system. And then that pushes out into our local park, Mill Creek Park, into the water systems there. And literally the water in the park is filled with poop from the city because of water runoff. And it, you know, it doesn't, it, it can stink. It doesn't really stink that bad. New York City apparently really smells in the middle of summer because of this problem. Um, but uh, you can't, you don't, want, you don't want to be eating fish out of Mill Creek Park. You don't want to be going, you know, there used to be a really big kayaking boom in the parks. But since we found out there was poop in the water, a lot fewer people kayak there now. So, you know, water runoff and stuff like that, that can be a really big point and it's something worth looking into for you guys. So, you know, sorry that's, you know, typically I, I give some more points than that, but to recap, you have industrialization, wealth eradication. Um, that is really good for people, uh, it helps them. And then on the other side, you have global warming, uh, water cycle, uh, biodiversity. So, uh, you know, as long as you're looking into those things, I think you'll be okay. You know, as always, make sure you're coming up with 10 to 15 contentions on each side on your, on your evidence cards and then block sheets. That way you don't get surprised by anything. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and please like, share, and subscribe that we can grow the channel. Thank you.